introducing the 24 volt LV2424 MSD. This is a particular unit that's pretty unique. It has got terminals uh, for everything, whereas the others kind of need uh, lugs on the end over there uh, for the battery. This could take two gauge wire going in. We stripped it off. It goes straight in there. We just take the little front cover off, the little face over there. That's held on with two screws. You can see the hole over there, another hole on the other side. That little cover comes off. That'll open up, allow you to the terminal area. Okay, so we can just stick our two gauge wire in there and tighten them down. And we're just kind of getting the batteries ready to go to show you all the things that can run, all our appliances over there that can run off this unit. And we're going to tax it to see where, uh, where it's going to break. With this unit, with this kit, we're supplying four 150 amp hour batteries, two of which are going to be connected in series to give you 24 volts. And the other two are also going to be connected together in series of 24 volts. And then we're going to parallel the positives of the first 24 volts with the, and then, and then parallel the negatives on the second 24 volt unit, giving us a total of 7.2 kilowatt hours. And uh, this is basically, that inverter is recommending uh, at least 200 amp hours of battery. Many people put 100 amp hours of battery and call me uh, for all sorts of trouble, uh, overcharging, etc., etc. This is why we're selling this as a kit, 7.2 kilowatt hours of battery. We're just about to connect up for the first time. We're going to use our pencil method just to uh, pre-charge the um, inverter's capacitors. All right, and we leave the inverter in the off position. Obviously, that's all we need to do is just touch there. And now we've got a few seconds that we can put everything together before the capacitor discharges. And we're gonna just so this is a first time waking up. So the reason this unit is flashing at the moment because this battery is 13.05 volts, and the other one, it's just brand new out the box is 13.06 so there's only like 10 millivolts difference between the two of them measure over there i just want to show everybody that there's 24 volts or 26 volts right now so we're ready to go with this inverter all right so we've got the tv running both toaster elements are going and we're pulling uh let's have a look 1.64 kilowatts so we've probably still got another 800 600 watts to go so we can run a hair dryer. On low. We'll just keep it there. We're right at the limit there, 2.4 kilowatts. If I put that hair dryer on high, we're gonna get overload. So I put it down to low, 2.4 kilowatts. And so that's a hair dryer. Four slices of toast. All right, so four slices of toast, <coughs> the hair dryer on medium, or we can have the hair dryer on high, and we can make the coffee maker. So we've got that on very hot, super high, TV on. And we just hit the down button, or up button. It'll tell us soon. A load at the moment is also 2.4 kilowatts. So the coffee pot, the hair dryer on full, that's the range. So right now we have the TV plugged in and the refrigerator plugged in, only pulling 40 watts, basically next to nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how many other little appliances. This is the kitchen makeover right now. We see how many kitchen appliances we can run at once. So we got the smoothie going. That's still coming up, only 200 watts so far. 500. Okay, 900 watts. And then we've got, make some hot water. Now we're up to 1.95 kilowatts. So, probably be pushing it with a toaster right now. Yep, and it's complaining. So the toaster and all those other items a little bit too much. The 
it's showing you with the 2424 MSD, you can comfortably run a refrigerator, a TV, your coffee pot, your blender, your toaster, and let's try a microwave. Okay, we're running a microwave. Blender. And the coffee pot. And the TV. And we're overloading. Okay. So, you just got to be cautious. It can run everything you need to. If you wanted anything bigger, the best is to go for a 3 kilowatt unit. Um, but the 2.4 kilowatt MSD is perfect for everything you see right here. It'll run it just fine all together. And uh, with these 7.2 kilowatt hour batteries, you get a good range of, uh, of life. We can always add more batteries to them on the end. And uh, overall, this unit is awesome. The problem some people have somehow is this one's a little bit noisy. The fans run. If you can hear, it's not it's hardly noticeable, but the fans do run all the time on this unit. Not very hard. Um, if you needed something that you wanted 240 volts, I wouldn't recommend this unit because it cannot be paralleled to give you 240 volts. You can parallel them to give you uh, 4.8 kilowatts at 120 volts. All right, so generators. These units could not plug into utility power or generator. Uh, if they get overloaded, they will switch over to utility and uh, you can overload them up to 100%. So basically it's, it's a 2.4 kilowatt unit. You can overload it up to 4.8 kilowatts through utility power uh, for a period of time. <clears throat> so uh, MPP Solar recommends at least a three, uh, a 1.5 times the kilowatt hour load or the capacity of the inverter so we're going to just run it off a little 1400 watt generator let's say uh, we're it's an emergency and we want to kind of uh, charge the batteries during the day on a, on a fuel efficient generator I'll show you how to do that so what I've done here is just taken a power strip this is just a temporary I'm showing you in the case of uh, a portable unit you could wire this to your breaker panel as is shown in other YouTube videos so this solar panel is not even connected yet. Just showing you what's possible from the batteries directly. So what we've done is just take an extension cord. We just cut the, uh, the other side off and we wired it into ground, live and neutral. Ground, obviously green, live is black and neutral is white. It doesn't have another ground terminal for the output, but it does have a screw at the bottom of it there, which I've just screwed that ground wire into the bottom. And then that goes to the AC output to our little power strip over there. Like I said, if you want to put, hook that into your utility box, you can. What we're going to try now is just our little generator for 1400 watts from Harbor Freight. And we're going to start it up. And show you. Let me just plug that in. What happened? See the little AC symbol came up. In a minute, it'll show you it's bypassing and now it's charging the battery. Also, setting 11, let's go to setting 11. it is setting 11 on this unit you can set how many battery amps so that's 30 amps at 24 volts so 30 times 24 is 600 watts you can go to um, 800 and something watts is the highest uh, even more 50 times 20 amps or 50 and we even go to 60 amps let's go to 60 amps or 2 amps show you 60 amps what happens if we overload our generator.
battery and there you go it just died so the good thing to do is to start low start low at 20 and 30 and 40 amps and see where your generator is happy otherwise you'll get the condition you just saw right now i think you saw that ac voltage coming in went to about 100 volts i had to reset my ac button over there before it will start i've set my amps down to 40 now give it a try 40 amps is also too high because you can see when it was loading it went down to 32 amps so I don't think uh, anything over 30 amps is wise with a small generator. We're now busy connecting solar. We've got two, um, two solar panels connected in parallel, 315 watt. Their total voltage is 44 volts. Remember, you cannot charge a 24 volt battery with less than 30 volts. So 44 volts is good. We just got to get we just got to get the polarity correct. Yeah, this one's positive over here. So we're just going to wire that into the inverter. There's our sun problem. We're now adding a solar panel combiner box to show you how that works. Uh, we just basically is wired it positive and negative on the output, and that's going to wire straight in. We strip the wire. It's going to wire into the positive and negative input on the PV inputs. Time has gone down a little bit, well, a little bit behind the cloud, but we're getting only 125 watts out of our uh, two 315 watt panels, wired in parallel. We're kind of running at the edge as well. Um, like I mentioned before, you don't want to charge a, a 24 volt battery with something close to 30 volts or so. So these two panels are in parallel. We're going to wire them in series and see what we get. This combiner box is included in this kit. It's a four into one. And uh, so that means you can put eight solar panels, the eight um, 280 watt panels that are provided uh, with this kit. Um, but um, so each, you're gonna put two solar panels in series and the two solar panels in series are gonna come in, the positive is gonna come in there and the negative is gonna come in there. And the second two solar panels in series, positive in there and negative in there and so we go on to three and four. So that's why it's called a four dash one combiner box. And you'll notice it shows red on top for danger and green when it's off. Okay, it's, sometimes people could think it's counterintuitive, but that's the way it works, okay? Red for on.